tal nuevos amigos? Soy su nueva amiga, señorita Padilla. Me da mucho gusto en conocerlos. I am pleased to meet you all. Welcome to this new unit of nuevos amigos. Are you ready to learn something new? Que bien, me alegro. I'm happy to hear that. In this series of lessons, we will explore Latin American cultural history, la historia, through learning about art, culture, and literature. El arte, la cultura, y la literatura. We'll also discover the customs and history of some Latin American nations. In each lesson, we will bring you a feature about history, historia, culture, cultura, and art. Arte. I know we will have fun as we explore new places, things, and ideas. We will have the verb of the day, which you will hear throughout the lesson, conversational dialogue, and new vocabulary words to write in your Spanish journal. Sus diarios de español. When you hear this sound, this will be a signal to let you know that new vocabulary words are going to appear and you should be ready to write these new words in your Spanish journal. We'll also be doing something new. You will be writing a short composition using some of your new vocabulary words. Do you know how to say composition in Spanish, nuevos amigos? Did you say composición? Eso es correcto. Composition in Spanish is composición. Composición. Isn't this exciting, nuevos amigos? You will be learning new things and expanding your knowledge of the Spanish language. So let's begin our first lesson with the verb of the day. El verbo del día es visitar. To visit, visitar. Let's conjugate our verb visitar. Yo visito. I visit. Tú visitas. You visit. Él, ella visita. He, she visits. Usted visita. You visit formal. Nosotros visitamos. We visit. Ustedes visitan. You all visit. In Texas, the influence of Latin American culture can be found in many places. In fact, Texas has always been a part of Latin American cultural history. You can see this influence in the words we speak, the food we eat, and the businesses and places we visit in our community. In Spanish, business is negocio. El negocio. Repeat after me. El negocio. Muy bien. The word for community is comunidad. La comunidad. Say it with me, nuevos amigos. La comunidad. Excelente. Now, let's visit some of these businesses. Ahora, vamos a visitar unos de estos negocios. El restaurante. La tienda de novias. La taquería. El salón de belleza. La frutería. La panadería. El mercado. Wow, there really are a lot of businesses in our community that reflect Latin American culture. Let's go over the names of the businesses together. In Spanish, restaurant is restaurante. El restaurante. Say it with me. El 
restaurante. The bridal store in Spanish is tienda de novias. La tienda de novias. Repitan conmigo. La tienda de novias. Muy bien. Then we have the taco stand. Mmm, tacos. Taco stand in Spanish is taquería. La taquería. Una vez más, la taquería. The beauty salon in Spanish is salón de belleza. El salón de belleza. Say it with me. El salón de belleza. Next, we have the bakery. Bakery is panaderia. La panaderia. La panaderia. We also have the fruit stand. La fruteria. Say it with me. La fruteria. La fruteria. The last vocabulary in this section is market. El mercado. El mercado. Una vez más. El mercado. Did the taco stand and the bakery make you hungry? It made me hungry. Jenny, ¿a dónde quieres visitar? Quiero visitar el mercado y la tortillería. La tortillería, ¿por qué? Because I like to watch them make the tortillas and I'm hungry. Tortilla, mmm, that sounds good. Let's go visit the tortilla factory first. Maria Luna and her two children, Carmen and Francisco, immigrated to the United States in 1923 from San Luis Potosí, Mexico. On her arrival in Dallas, Texas, she worked in a grocery store grinding corn that was used to make masa, which is the dough used to make corn tortillas. Eight months later, she set up shop to make tortillas and Luna's Tortillas has been in business ever since. I had to, I had to deliver. I would drive a uh, Model T Ford, about 10 years old, and I used to go to West Dallas. We used to go here for the Texas store, I mean, Texas Stadium is now. I used to have a Rancho Grande. So we used to go there and deliver tortillas and deliver all the around this community. In 1938, Luna's Tortillas moved to a larger location in downtown Dallas which the company still occupies. And we have a machine that makes about 1,500 dozen tortillas in an hour, and we, and, and we work in about six or eight hours. We make tamales here in the tortilla factory with my mother's recipe, and it becomes very popular that we, Christmas of next year, we sold 1,750 dozen over that counter. Basically, here in the tortillas, uh, the process of cooking tortillas is about a four or five step process. We use select corn, white corn, uh, grown in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, the corn is cooked in 250 pound vats. We cook it on uh, in the mornings, let it set for overnight, take it and wash it the next morning. Rinse it real good, thoroughly twice, then it's fed to our corn grinder. The corn grinder grinds out of that 250 pounds of, of corn, yields about 750 pounds of masa. Therefore, we're making the, the masa into the tortilla machine. The tortilla machine's cutters, uh, I don't know if you, the tortilla cutters will roll out the tortillas, just like you would at home, except it's done by machine. It rolls out tortillas at about 720 dozen per hour. So we're making quite a few tortillas per day. Basically, that's the four steps.
Hola nuevos amigos, soy su nuevo amigo Kuali Tepe. I will be bringing you wisdom from our ancestors. Do you know what a dicho is? A dicho is a saying or a proverb. I'm sure that you've heard some wise sayings in your community. Let me tell you a saying, un dicho, and see if you recognize it. La mejor medicina es la buena comida. Say it with me, nuevos amigos. La mejor medicina es la buena comida. Very good. This translates to, the best medicine is good food. A similar saying in English would be, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Let's say it one more time in Spanish. La mejor medicina es la buena comida. Así es. Hasta la próxima, nuevos amigos. Well, nuevos amigos, isn't it interesting to know how much Latin American culture influences our community? Have you been listening for the verb of the day? Visitar? You have? Excelente! Be sure to write the vocabulary words for this lesson in your Spanish journals. Now, I'd like to introduce to you a special member of our community, La Señora Anita Martinez who will show us the art of ballet folclorico, folk dancing. To dance in Spanish is bailar. Bailar. Repite conmigo. Bailar. Bailar. Muy bien. When we dance, we dance to music. Music in Spanish is música. La música. La música. Bueno. Vamos a visitar a mi amiga, la señora Anita Martínez. I discovered that I was a dancer when I was about six or seven years old, when uh, my uh, friend that lived next door and I used to put on performances in her front porch for the people going by. Folk dancing is a type of traditional, communal dancing passed down from generation to generation in a social or recreational atmosphere. I saw the need for our, our Hispanic children, our Mexican-American children, to uh, feel pride and to learn about their rich cultural heritage. Folk dance uses traditional costumes and accessories which aids in preserving our link to our cultural heritage. These types of dances include war, contest, courtship, wedding, holiday, and religious dances. There are also dances for the fun of movement alone. I have been to see uh, the Amalia Hernandez Ballet Folklorico in Mexico City in the 60s and I was trying to figure out what can I do to make our young people learn and know about who they are. I think that it, it is one of the most satisfying um, arts, uh, professional and performing arts, is dance because your body is the instrument and you have to be in, in good health to be a good dancer. Also, it teaches you uh, discipline it teaches you self-confidence, it teaches you to be responsible, it teaches you uh, uh, to be a team player. But there are uh, about 26 different regions of dance, and so everybody has their own little uh, uh, personal style of dance. You know, like in Chiapas there's one style, in Guadalajara it's another style, and, and you know, the different regions of Mexico. So. Uh, it's, uh, there's a little bit of it for everyone. Nosotros visitamos la tienda de novias para ver los vestidos. What color dress does this do for a quinceañera celebration? She wants a blue dress. Quiero un vestido azul. Se ver muy bonita bailando. El hambre de la quinceañera. En mis quince pasé, de niña a mujer. El hambre que me dio, 
al ver la iglesia del Señor. Desfilé hacia el altar con nervios y demás. La misa se acabó y la fiesta comenzó. El vals ya lo bailé y me comí todo el pastel. Por fin el hambre se me quitó, pues ahora ya pasé de ser niña a mujer. Wasn't that an interesting poem, nuevos amigos? There were a number of words you should have recognized from our earlier lessons. Do you remember the words niña and mujer? Yes? Great! Niña is Spanish for girl. La niña. Mujer is Spanish for woman. Say it with me. La mujer. Very good. How about fiesta? Everybody should know what fiesta means. Fiesta in Spanish means party. Did you remember? And then, baile is the word for dance. El baile. This is a poem about how a quinceañera, a girl turning 15 years old, feels during and after her ceremony. She is nervous and hungry at church and throughout the party. But when it is all over, she knows that she has become a woman and her hunger is gone. A quinceañera is a celebration of a girl's 15th birthday. It's a special occasion because it is when a girl becomes a woman. Hispanic girls all over the world celebrate this occasion. The difference between a quinceañera and any other birthday party is that it is fancier and more people are invited. On the day of her quinceañera, the first thing a girl does is go to church to give thanks. She invites her closest relatives, aunts, uncles, godparents, grandparents, brothers, sisters, cousins, and close friends. The priest talks to her about becoming a woman. Once the spiritual ceremony is over, she moves on to the social part of the quinceañera. At this time, her many invited guests come to celebrate her becoming a woman. This is where she celebrates by having a band play live music and dancing all night. <laughs> Wasn't that fun, nuevos amigos? One day it may be you celebrating your quinceañera. Ahora es tiempo para la composición estudiantil. It's time for your composition. This is a writing exercise where you will use words from this lesson's vocabulary to compose a paragraph on the subject of the quinceañera. Imagine that you have just returned from a friend's quinceañera celebration. Write in your journal and describe what it was like. How did people dress? What kind of food did you eat? What kind of music was playing? Work on this paragraph with your teacher in your classroom. Mucha suerte, nuevos amigos! We've come to the end of our first lesson, nuevos amigos. I hope you enjoyed our time together. Let's go over what we've learned today. The verb of the day was visitar. And in our dialogue, our students use the sentences, ¿A dónde quieres visitar? And, Yo quiero visitar el mercado y la tortillería. Our new vocabulary included the terms, el restaurante, the restaurant, la tienda de novias, the bridal store, la taquería, the taco stand, el salón de belleza, the beauty salon, la panadería, the bakery, and la frutería, the fruit stand. We learned the word for market, el mercado, and the tortilla factory, la tortillería, in our first dialogue. We also learned about folk dancing, ballet folclórico, where we learned how to say bailar, to dance, and la música, music. In our second dialogue, we used the conjugated form of the verb visitar. We said, nosotros visitamos, 
meaning we visit. Our wise man brought us a dicho, a wise saying or proverb to bring us wisdom. La mejor medicina es la buena comida. Can you remember what this proverb means? Keep it in mind so you can use it in your everyday life. Be sure to write today's vocabulary words and your composition in your Spanish journals. Bravo, nuevos amigos! You've done a great job! Han hecho un trabajo fantástico! If you have any interesting information or fun ideas about Latin American culture and history, then I'd like to hear from you. Write me a message and have your teacher email it to me. Mándame un correo electrónico. Our email address is nuevosamigos at dallasisd.org. Remember, when you learn to speak another language, you also make new friends. Acuérdense, cuando aprendemos más de un idioma, podemos hacer nuevos amigos. Adiós. nuevos amigos, bienvenidos una vez más a su programa. I've been thinking of you and wondering if you began to practice your vocabulary words, your dialogues, and write your compositions this past week. Have you been studying? You have? I'm so pleased. We have many interesting things to learn about today, so get out your Spanish journals, sharpen your pencils, and be ready to write. Ahora, saquen sus diarios de español y prepárense para escribir. Last time we met, we learned about the influence of Spanish culture all around us. Didn't the tortillas from Luna's Tortilla Factory look delicious? And the traditional quinceañera celebration was so joyful. Well, one of the reasons we have such a wonderful variety of businesses traditions and people in our communities is because people like the Luna family immigrated to the United States. Immigration is the act of moving or settling in another country or region temporarily or permanently. Let's learn how to say immigration in Spanish. Listen. Inmigración. La inmigración. Repeat after me. La inmigración. Very good. Today, 
we will learn why many people immigrated to the United States from Mexico in the early 1900s. We will also look at some types of Latin American music and we'll discover a Mexican celebration that might seem a little unusual, but it's definitely family-minded. El Dia de los Muertos. All right, nuevos amigos, let's begin with the verb of the day. Empecemos con el verbo del día. El verbo del día es mudarse, to move, mudarse. Let's conjugate our verb mudarse, to move. Yo me mudo. I move. Tú te mudas. You move. Él, ella, se muda. He, she, moves. Usted se muda. You move formal. Nosotros nos mudamos. We move. Ustedes se mudan. You all move. To move, mudarse, can be a life-changing event. When people immigrated to the United States from Mexico and other Latin American countries, they brought with them their belongings, but they also brought their culture and traditions. People immigrate for a number of reasons. These can include professional, political, and economic reasons like finding better opportunities for work and education and also to escape war or persecution. Another reason is to be close to family members. Many people have come to the United States to find liberty. Liberty is the condition in which people are free to make choices in their lives without being persecuted. Liberty in Spanish is libertad. La libertad. Say it with me. La libertad. Muy bien. Let's learn two additional words that we will discuss in our history segment related to immigration and liberty. La revolución. Revolution. La revolución. El dictador. Dictator. El dictador. ¿A dónde te mudas? Yo me mudo a California. Mi hermana se mudó a California el año pasado. Great. When we move there, we'll go visit your sister. Many immigrants from all over the world have moved to the United States. Some people came from Latin American countries like Cuba, El Salvador, Colombia, Venezuela, and Nicaragua. One of the largest groups of immigrants is people from Mexico. Mexicans have sought refuge and opportunity here since the last century. In the early 1900s, Mexico was in a political transition from a time of dictatorship of Porfirio Diaz into a time of revolution that ran from 1910 until about 1921 and then the aftermath of that revolution a time of great uncertainty a time when people were at risk in their hometowns as armies of different kinds came through and pillaged or saved them depending on your point of view and many people found it necessary to leave their hometowns either to go to the cities like Mexico City or even to leave the country and go across the northern border in the United States. When we look at immigrant communities in the United States over the last couple of centuries we discover they tend to come into places and form enclaves, form little communities because initially they speak a language which is not English they need to be able to communicate, they need to find housing, they need to find work, and they do that through their social networks, through their friends and their family members. Our research in the social sciences suggests that for Mexico, the people who come north tend to be better prepared than the ones who stay behind. That is, they are the cream of the crop, educationally, um, 
socially in terms of having networks already in the United States, psychologically in that they're willing to take the risks that are involved in coming to a new land. By comparison to the population in the United States, they tend to not have as high a level of education, but they adapt very well. Their children go to school, they learn English, and they prosper as all immigrant populations have prospered through the second and third generations. So it's a myth that they're poorly prepared and cause our society to be downgraded in economic or psychological or social terms. They actually provide new ways of thinking, uh, entrepreneurship to the economy. So many of our new businesses are run by immigrants, some of which then are very successful. And a small place that starts out making tortillas can become later a franchise with multiple locations and be very successful. That's because of the entrepreneurial spirit that the immigrants have. They're going to do something new in a new place. The Hispanic population in the United States continues to grow through immigration and in the process their role in the U.S. economy is growing. They are great consumers. They are interested in buying consumer goods of all kinds, cars, houses. Their participation in the housing market has been responsible for a tremendous boom in housing throughout the United States, especially in the American Southwest. They represent billions of dollars worth of ownership of businesses and their consumer buying power is in the billions of dollars a year. Uh, estimates are that within a decade or so they may represent a trillion dollars in consumer purchasing power. They buy for themselves and they send their monies to their families back in Mexico and other countries as well. They are sustaining not just their economy here but the economies of other countries that can prosper uh, through their resources and their hard work. They are risk takers, entrepreneurs, and they bring their traditions with them and we are fortunate to have them. ¿Qué tal amigos? Me da mucho gusto en verlos de nuevo. I'm happy to see you again. Today I want you to think about our dicho and consider how the good decisions you make today can bring you a wonderful future. Listen. Cada quien construye su propio destino. Repitan conmigo. Cada quien construye su propio destino. When translated into English, this dicho means each person builds his own destiny. Now say it with me again in Spanish. Cada quien construye su propio destino. Muy bien. Think about today's dicho this week. And we will learn another wise saying next time, nuevos amigos. Adios. How did you like our dicho today? I think it's very appropriate especially since we're learning about people whose lives have changed because they moved from one country to another. They changed their destiny. When we speak about arte, most of us think about paintings, drawings, and things we can see. But art also includes things we can hear. What do you listen to that could be considered artistic? Could it be a song? La canción? Yes, say it with me. La canción. La canción. Good. Who would sing a song? Did you say a singer? Correcto. A singer, el cantante, would sing a song. Let's say it together. El cantante. El Cantante. Many times when a singer sings, he or she is accompanied by an orchestra or a band. Orchestra in Spanish is orquesta. La orquesta. Repeat after me. La orquesta. Very good. 
A band in Spanish is banda. La banda. Todos juntos. La banda. Excelente. Now, let's take a look at Latin music. One of the important cultural developments of the early 20th century was the rise of popular Latin music. It includes the music of many Latin countries and comes in many varieties. There is the sophisticated salsa of Cuba and Puerto Rico, the tangos of Argentina, and the folk music of Jalisco State in Mexico, just to name a few. It has such a large variety of styles that it appeals to almost everyone. One of the internationally known and popular styles is mariachi. Mariachi bands, bandas, originated in Mexico in the 1850s. They originally played at weddings and traditional celebrations. It is said that President Porfirio Diaz, in 1907, ordered a mariachi band to play for the United States Secretary of State, but they could only play if they wore charro suits. This is the traditional dress for mariachi bands and is considered the beginning of modern mariachi. A mariachi band is made up of musicians that play violins, trumpets, the guitar, the vihuela, a smaller guitar, and the guitarron, a larger bass guitar. There isn't a lead singer, cantante, in mariachi because everyone in the ensemble sings. Different members sing the lead in different songs, canciones, depending on the singer's abilities in order to present a program that is artistically rounded. Today, Latin American music is played around the world in places as far away as France and Japan. Latin American music is everywhere! ¿Qué tipo de música te gusta? A mí me gusta la música latina. ¿Y qué tipo de música le gusta a tu papá? My father likes mariachi music best of all. Estatua de la Libertad. La antorcha se encendió hace cientos de años. Le han visto al llegar inmigrantes en sus barcos. A veces se apaga, pero a gritos le aclaman. Que se encienda la llama para que alumbre el camino y a los aventureros su destino. Para que el cielo proteja la libertad y se extienda por toda ciudad. Did you recognize the vocabulary word la libertad in today's poem? You did? Excelente! This poem reflects the feeling most Americans have. As we know, the United States is a country formed by immigrants looking for a better opportunity than what they had in their original countries. The flame of the Statue of Liberty in New York represents, in this poem, the hope of liberty and freedom that immigrants want to find in this country. Now, let's take a look at a special celebration that is held in many Latin American countries to remember family members and friends who were precious to us but are no longer alive. This celebration is called El Día de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. <coughs> Celebration in Spanish is celebración. La celebración. Repitan conmigo. La celebración. The word for dead in Spanish is muerto. Say it with me. Muerto. Muerto. Pay close attention to how this celebration is conducted at home and at the cemetery. Cemetery in Spanish is cementerio. El cementerio. Una vez más, el cementerio. Ahora veamos. As immigrants, inmigrantes, came from Mexico, they brought with them more than just their language and food. Many historic and religious rituals quickly took root. 
One example is the celebration, La Celebración, of El Día de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead, which is becoming more popular in the United States. One of the most important dates in the Catholic religious calendar is the Day of the Dead, Día de los Muertos, or Noche de los Muertos, as it's more often referred to in Mexico, because people go to the cemeteries where their ancestors are buried and spend the night in communion with their ancestors. They bring food, they bring drink, they celebrate, they play music, they have a sense that the spirits are among them. It's not so much about being dead, but being in the family and having a sense of togetherness during that long night, which is finished then with a communion mass in the morning held in the cemetery. Usually an altar is also prepared at home for a deceased loved one that you want to remember. It is decorated with pictures, candles, flowers, and favorite foods of the deceased. People make or buy sugar skulls and handcrafted skeletons, calaveras, which are funny and friendly rather than frightening or spooky. They represent the beloved dead ones, their occupations and hobbies. As they are placed on the altar, the delightful skeleton figures bring back fond memories and cause the grieving ones to smile. On November 1st and 2nd, it is believed that the spirit of the person will find its way to the altar and visit the living relatives that are honoring him or her. The 1st of November is designated for the souls of young children who have passed away. It is called the Day of the Little Angels, El Día de los Angelitos. The 2nd of November is dedicated to the souls of adults. Mexicans consider death as part of life, and although it is sad to lose a loved one, the Day of the Dead is more of a celebration, una celebración, to honor the lives of those who are gone. Isn't that fascinating, nuevos amigos? ¡Qué increíble! Ahora es tiempo para la composición estudiantil. It's time for your composition. Imagine that you are an immigrant and you have just moved to a new country. Write a letter to a friend describing what it is like. What kinds of stores are there? What kinds of restaurants? What kind of music do you hear? Use as much Spanish as you can as you describe your experience. Buena suerte! It's time for our review. Let's go over the new things we've learned today, nuevos amigos. The verb of the day was mudarse, to move. In our first dialogue, our students used the sentences. ¿A dónde te mudas? And, yo me mudo a California. We also use the sentence, Mi hermana se mudó a California el año pasado. Our new vocabulary included the terms, La inmigración, Immigration, La libertad, Liberty, La revolución, Revolution. El dictador. Dictator. And la canción. Song. El cantante. Singer. La orquesta. Orchestra. La banda. Band. We also learned the words el cementerio. Cemetery. Muerto. Dead. La celebración, celebration. In our second dialogue, the students use the following sentences. ¿Qué tipo de música te gusta? A mí me gusta la música latina. ¿Y qué tipo de música le gusta a tu papá? Our wise man brought us the dicho. Cada quien construye su propio destino. Remember to think of the meaning of our dicho and how you can make good decisions for your future. Be sure to write today's vocabulary words and your composition about what it is like to move to a new country in your Diarios de Español. 
You've worked very hard today, Nuevos Amigos. I am so proud of you. You've done an excellent job. Han hecho un trabajo excelente. If you have any interesting information or fun ideas about Latin American culture and history, then I'd like to hear from you. Write me a message and have your teacher email it to me. Mándame un correo electrónico. The email address is nuevosamigos at dallasisd.org. Remember, when you learn to speak another language, you also make new friends. Acuérdense, cuando aprendemos más de un idioma, podemos hacer nuevos amigos. Adiós.